All right, let's do a uh, problem with contingency tables, or in other words, a uh, test for independence. So if we read this problem, it says the table below includes results from a polygraph or lie detector experiment conducted by researchers. In each case, it was known if the subject lied or did not lie. So the table indicates when the polygraph test was correct. Use a .05 significance level to test the claim that whether a subject lies is independent of the polygraph test indication. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so when you're doing a contingency table or independence uh, test, the null hypothesis always has to have independence and uh, therefore the alternatives is dependent or not independent, however you want to think of that. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, the only one that uh, matches that is C here. C has the null has independent, the alternative has not independent. So that's pretty easy. All right, so now uh, if we go to the formula sheet, uh, we're over here on this column on the end, we're testing for independence. Uh, we need to make sure we do check our conditions. We're going to use StatCrunch to help us with that. But every cell needs to have an expected frequency of at least five. We are in the chi-square distribution, uh, the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one will give us the degrees of freedom. Uh, so let's tackle that real quick. And uh, again, our test statistic is going to be chi-squared equals the sum of observed minus expected squared all over expected. So we'll let StatCrunch calculate that for us. Um, I want to get a critical value though, uh, degrees of freedom, number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So if we go back to the problem, we haven't even looked at the data yet, but here's the data. Uh, so there's two rows, two columns. Okay, uh, so if I jump back, uh, two rows, two columns, well, that ends up being uh, one times one, so that's one. So there's one degree of freedom here. And our alpha was 0.05, and so if I jump into StatCrunch, helps if I have the right thing selected. Stat calculators, calculators, because I'm looking at a critical value. Degree of freedom is only one. Uh, we're going to the right, and it's 0 0.05. Nope, not 58, just 0 0.05. So there it is, uh, 3.841. So it looks something like so, and I squared some R because I'm on the right hand side. 3.841, I believe it was. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, StatCrunch then. Or in here. So if you see they got the data again, you can uh, click this icon and have it open a window in StatCrunch for you. you know, I'll make this a little bit bigger for us. And if it'll let me, there we go. Come on, you can do it. Oh, I need to grab my mouse. Using my pen icon, it's just not working too well there. All right, so there we go. Uh, so the rows, uh, polygraph indicated a lie, polygraph, in, polygraph indicated no lie, and they did not lie and lie. Okay. So if I'm going to do this, again, you can always go to the formula sheet if you forget to where to go in stat crunch. So down here in the bottom, stat, tables, contingency with summary. So we'll do that. So we'll go to stat, tables, contingency with summary. So what are our columns? Uh, both of these are our columns. And uh, if you check it out, there they are. There's, those are the two columns of data. Now the row labels, stat, for some reason it labeled that with an underscore 
So the two things under that underscore column are the row labels. So that's where the row labels are. And then uh, select expected count because that's going to help us check our conditions. Otherwise, we can leave everything else alone. If I hit compute, there it is. Uh, and so you can see our expected counts are in parentheses there. And so all four of those values are above five. So we do meet the conditions of the test. Uh, then we also see our chi-squared value and our p-value. Our p-value is extremely small, so less than 0 0.0001. So 22.33 for chi-squared. So 22.33, was that right? Short-term memory here lately. Okay, good. And uh, P is less than 0 0.0001. So that means we are way out here in the rejection region. And so certainly uh, since P is definitely less than alpha, because alpha is 0 0.05, we will reject the null. And the null said that they were independent, so since we're rejecting the null, we think uh, it's not independent. Okay, so let's jump back and we'll go ahead and we'll throw these values into StatCrunch and answer the question. So maybe I can slide this window here, slide my StatCrunch window over here, and then I can kind of see both at the same time. There we go. So uh, what was that or what was chi squared? Uh, it says round to three decimal places. So 22.330. Uh, what was my p value? Round to four decimal places, 0.0001. And like we said, p is low, the null has got to go, the p is less than alpha, so we're gonna reject. Um, so there is sufficient evidence to re warrant rejection of the claim uh, that it's independent. And we got it. So there it is. Uh, so there is a contingency table slash independence test. Uh, and with the aid of StatCrunch.